for you to function in the Lordship of Christ Jesus, the first thing you got to learn is the Lordship of the Word of God. And it's called the, the Word of His grace, which is able to build you up. The, the Lordship of the Word of God is so important because, you see, you fellowship with the Word. How do you fellowship with the Word? As you study the Word, you talk back to the Word. My. You study the Word. He says, I can do all things through Christ. Then you say, yes, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me. You know, I told you a long time ago to notice that he didn't say through Christ who strengthened me. He said through Christ which strengthened me. And there's a reason he said through Christ which strengthened me. Because he was not talking about the person of Christ. He was talking about the anointing of Christ. That's why he said through Christ which energizes. He's talking about the anointing of Christ which energizes me. Which strengthened me. The anointing. The anointed, the anointed. Hallelujah. The Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord. So you fellowship with the word. You talk the word. You're in your room, not only reading it, you begin to mutter it. He says, meditate upon these things. That means talk them under your voice. Then it says, Talk them back to yourself. Then it says, talk them to God. Then you begin to shout it. But you're all alone. If you can shout it in your room, one of these days you're going to shout it on house tops. Are you hearing me? All things work together for good. And you're, you're alone inside your room. All things work together for good. That means all things are functioning together. They are cooperating for my good. All things work together, function together. Nothing is against me. Nothing. All things work together for good to them that love God. And I love God. He's talking about me. I love God. The word is talking about me. He says all things work together for good to them that love God. And that means me. Because I know that I love God. Therefore all things work together for good to me. It's working for my good. Somebody said, I hate you. That is a glory. It's working for my good. Chris, I just don't like you. Woo, thank you, Jesus. It's working for my good. See, I cannot be disadvantaged. It's working for my good. All things work together, function together. They are taking their place. Do you understand? They are all cooperating together for good to them that love God. That means me. He's talking about me. I said he's talking about me. The word is talking about me. All things work together for good. That means for my advantage. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
See, see, I'm fellowshipping the word. Now, I said, I was, I, I, I've got to tell you something. He said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. The word, now, he didn't say, I commend you to God and to the word, which is able to build you up. He didn't say that. The Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Instruct, yeah, yeah. Do you understand what I'm talking about, brother? Instruction in righteousness. That means it's an instruction manual. Better find out exactly what it says. Because he's given you instructions for the righteous life. It's called a right, the life of righteousness. He says, instruction in righteousness, in the life of righteousness. What does he mean by the life of righteousness? It means the God life. You understand? It's a life of success, prosperity, and victory. Now listen again. He says, I commend you, Acts chapter 20, verse 32, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. Now, remember, he said to Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Then John lets us know something very vital. When you study in St. John's Gospel, chapter number 1, from verse 14, it says, The Word became flesh. The Word became flesh. The Word became flesh. Oh! The Word became flesh. And dwelt among us. John says, and we beheld his glory. The glory of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace. Full of grace. Joshua didn't see that, brother. Moses didn't see that. You know what happened? Let me tell you something about Moses. One day, Moses, after he had walked with God so long, he said, oh God, show me your glory. Show me your glory. Because he read the law. He didn't see the glory in that law, but the glory came upon him. He saw the life. He saw that glory, but all he saw was just the light of God. He hadn't seen something about the glory of God. It's called the greater glory. I, see, I, I don't have that time tonight, but it's called the greater glory. That's what Moses wanted to see. You know, the Bible says that Jesus performed the first miracle in Cana of Galilee, where he turned water into wine, and there manifested for his glory. All right? That's not the big glory. Turning water to wine is not all of the glory of God. He actually said to the disciples, you're going to see greater things. See, there is a greater glory. And that's what Moses wanted to see. Because when the law came to Moses, the glory of God came on him. So much so that the Jews ran away from him as he came down the mountain. But that was a little glory. So he said, oh God, show me your glory. I want to see the big thing. Show me your glory. And God said, Moses, you want to see something big? He said, you die. You die. He said, Lord, nevertheless, show me your glory. God said, all right, here's what I'm going to do. You can't see my face. You see my face, boy? You roast. He said, all right. So he said, Lord, just show me your glory. I said, all right. I'm going to hide you somewhere in pass. You know what he said? He said, I'm going to let my goodness pass. <laughs> he said, 
said, I'll let my goodness pass. Then you will see my hind part. Why didn't Moses see the face of God? Because he couldn't. Why? Those who walk in the law cannot see the glory of God. He could not see the goodness of God. That's the big thing about God. The trouble is that when that thing shows up, it's not what you thought. Do you understand? Why didn't he show it to Moses? Because if Moses saw it, he'd die. Why would he die? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Not because he'll be consumed by the fierceness of God. He'll be consumed by how small he would think God is. Oh. Discover a new world of excitement at the Christ Embassy website. Log on today at www.christembassy.org. You've seen these exciting teaching series from the Charismatic Renewal Conference with Pastor Chris, but here is your opportunity to own it on video. The Charismatic Renewal Conference is now available in video and audio tapes. In a, in a panical world, there are laws. In the first dimension, there are laws. In the second dimension, there are laws. In the third dimension, there are laws to function with. In the fourth dimension, there are laws, principles of faith. In the fifth dimension, there is only one law. And it is not seen in that realm as a law. It is seen as a simple principle, the principle of love. Hallelujah. It controls everything. At that level of life, you are not dealing with sin. At that level of life, you are not dealing with needs. At that level of life, you're not dealing with wants. At that level of life, you own the world. You Don't miss this opportunity to take this conference right to your doorstep. Call today and place your order by calling the numbers now displayed on your screen or online at www.christembassyonlinestore.org. Available in audio and video tapes, audio and video CDs. It shows you who you really are, where you really are, what really belongs to you. Can you shout When he saw the lightnings and the thunderings, he said, God is great. <gasps> When God stepped on Mount Sinai, the Bible says it's burnt with flames. With the breath of his nostrils. There was a blast in the Red Sea. It split wide open. Now you think, if we saw God, there'd be so much fire. Boy, if we saw God, Moses said, show me your glory. God said, no, 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 no. So I let my goodness pass. Now I'll show you my hand part. He said, all right. And then the Lord passed by. Now listen. Listen to what John said. We beheld his glory. <laughs> the glory of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and reality. Full of grace. Hey, I feel like. I, I wish I, I wish I'd been in my room. I would scatter everything I'm wearing now. Full air. He said, We beheld his glory. Full of grace. Full of grace. 
What is grace? Grace is the awesome beauty of God. Grace is the goodness and the kindness of God. Grace is the loving tenderness of God. Far removed from wickedness and falsehood. Far removed from everything that damns. Far removed from every darkness. Grace is the beauty of God. Oh, grace, grace, grace. He said, we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and reality. Then he said, of his fullness, <laughs> have all we received. And grace for grace. In the 17th verse, he looked down. He said, surely the law came by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The law condemns. The law brings a fire of God. The law is harsh. Yet the law is righteous. But the Bible says the law made nothing perfect. But the bringing in of a better hope did. As great as the law was. The Bible says, not a law could give life. The law itself was life, but could not give life. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace and truth, truth. So the, the God that Moses revealed was not the true revelation of the nature of God. No wonder the people knew the acts of God. He says Moses knew the ways of God but could not communicate the ways of God. Then came Jesus. He says grace and truth. Grace and truth. Grace and truth. Who is God? Never in the Old Testament did they know that God was love. They didn't know that. But over in the New Testament, John cries out, God is love. Now he says, I commend you to God, not to the word of the law, which is able to kill you, But do you know that's what a lot of Christians are preaching? The word of the law. The word of his judgment. They're not preaching the word of his grace. Grace means I'm accepted of him. Grace means I'm so blessed, so blessed, I could never spend the blessing. Grace means I am connected to him. Grace means I have been made rich. It is for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. For though he was rich, for your sakes he became poor. That he through his poverty might become rich. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? How shall we escape? How will you escape the damnation of hell? Without grace as great as this. Where a man is accepted without his works. How will you escape? The word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Grace. Grace. Somebody say grace. grace. Say it again, grace. grace. One more time, grace. grace. 
Grace. Grace. Grace. Grace. Grace means that I'm surrounded with his love. Grace means I am the focus of his love plan. Listen, I am the object of his love. That's what grace means. That means I've come to know that the sun, the moon, the stars, and the planets were made because of me. I wonder what you think about you. What do you think about you? You know why God put you on, on earth? You know why you're in this world? To manifest his glory. He put you here for a reason. You may be suffering. You may be going through some pain in your life. You may be suffering some hardship in your life. But hear me. God didn't mean it to be so for your life. No matter where you find yourself, he's given you the necessary material in the word of God to come out into the glory. Amen. You can beautify your life. Amen. It's your responsibility. Somebody looked at the mirror. She stood there, looked at herself in the mirror, and then started crying. She said, I hate myself. I hate myself. I just hate myself. I just hate myself. I feel sorry for you. <laughs> you know why? Because there are many people in the world to help you multiply that hate for yourself. <laughs> there are a lot of people who don't see any reason why you should be happy about yourself. There are a lot of people in the world who are ready to help you hate yourself. You already dislike yourself anyway. You say, I wish I would just die. I say, it's true. <laughs> but let me tell you something. Nobody, mark it, nobody was ever like you. You are the first of you to come into this world. Listen. You are the first of you to come into this world. Don't fail. You are the only one of you that God has. He's never had anybody like you. He doesn't have another one like you. He will never have another one like you. Don't fail. Don't fail. Refuse to fail. It was not a mistake that you came from that family that you came from. It was not a mistake. Maybe by the time you were growing up, your father was a madman in the street. It was not a mistake. There's something. There's something about your life. I heard a story one time. Let me tell you about a story I heard one time was a story about Winston Churchill. How that he picked a little boy up who was hopeless and homeless. He picked that little boy up and trained him. Sent him to school. His father, actually, Winston Churchill's father, picked the little boy up, his father, and trained that little boy. You remember Winston Churchill? Guess what? That boy, that rascal, Winston's father trained up. 
discovered penicillin. And one day, years later, when Mr. Churchill was sick and required penicillin injection, it was this guy's work that saved his life. But his father never knew that one day, the little boy that he picked up would discover penicillin. Why did I tell you that? That boy was a nobody. But when he picked him up, he didn't know this was the savior of his son's life. Every day, God places around us. Listen, you are something. Do you understand what I'm telling you? If only somebody could discover the gold mine in you. If only they knew what was in you. If somebody doesn't help you find out, you do something. Find out. Don't wait too long. There's something inside every one of us. Something big. Big enough to change the world. Something big. You may be here now. You don't even have money for clothes. Not even money for your house right. You may be there. You live in a little room. Not even enough money to pay. Listen. There's something inside you. If you could only look inwards. And use the word to build that thing up. Let me hear you say, I'm on my way, I'm on my way, I'm on my way, I'm on my way, I'm on my way.